So when we left things off, we'd suffered a minor explosion problem that left the polar penguin, our Volcaric, at the bottom of the ocean, next to Cutter's rig on Hurston. Well, we were heading in to recover what we could from the crash site, and an excited Sharpest Katana was already on site and in scuba mode. I see the Ursa. No way! <laughs> it's not operational. See, this is, this is good gameplay because now it's a salvage mission. Cutter's rig is an offshore platform adjacent to an island on Hurston. The Clara could become entangled with the platform on opening its ramp and exploded. But those already on site were doing a great job of locating all the boxes. And then there's two more after that one in total. I I, I realized I could just move things into my local. <laughs> is there a local I'll inventory? Because if there yes. is, that, that makes things so much easier. Wow. Now, nice it might job. make it easier, but... Local inventory was also about to cause a major problem for Skiz in an Avenger Titan on the scene. Oh, hey, look, now there's an Avenger, uh, an Avenger down here. That's crazy. Don't worry, we're like 13 oh, kilometers you away. Yes. <laughs> yeah, no, you just said there was a local inventory. I instinctually <laughs> did I to check to see if there was a local inventory. I was <laughs> about two meters above the water, so there was no, didn't even get it turned back on. Do you want me to put everything in my local inventory or actually just definitely put it in, in, in local yeah because that way it's like that way it's definitely safe you know getting ready to run from a caterpillar falling into my head the mission that had brought us here was also still active so we were dropping off a few people to go and kill the targets on this platform you should be able to jump out now we're good all right i'm in quantum uh, i'll be right back caterpillar can you face your lights down and direct me towards the box the water was too deep to just track the boxes up and out, so Katana was storing them in local inventory before walking to the nearby island coast. There we could transfer the salvaged boxes to the caterpillar. There's a container I just found and I could steal it, so I did. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can, can I access the boat? Yes. Right, Mission complete. It's, all one, of those, all it's one of those golden boxes. Good work, nice guys. Well done. And as boxes arrived on board, we would check their contents. Let's see what this one is. Yeah, this one, <laughs> this one's got the SRT containers in it. That, that's it. Those are vital. Those are absolutely vital. Okay. I uh, still stole one of them. Guns. Yes, yeah, a gun box. Yeah. Items that were in the ship inventory would get their own special box, but just like we'd seen on the reclaimer, there was a problem with items being transferred to the box. Yeah, but it's it's that same thing we had before, Vlas, where it's like empty. Uh. On the reclaimer, whenever it happened, it would create the boxes, but they'd just be empty. And I think it, this is the same thing. Yeah. Some of the boxes had been brought with Katana's cutter as well, which was taking us to the platform so we could try to recover my body. Yeah, you should be on the bridge, Blast. My corpse marker is over by here on the reclaimer rack. The Pisces is upside down. <laughs> but just what condition was the Pisces in? Uh, Actually, there should you know, be one in the wreck really someplace. That's <laughs> RP. <laughs> it still has gravity, so it might still work. Oh, did you make it in? No, but I, I got close enough that it flipped me up, so down. Here, I'll okay, I'm in. This. No, oh. Ooh, 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 no, oh no, I'm falling. I have. Uh, no, Katie. I'm not dead. But I hadn't fully fallen all the way just yet. Uh oh, 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 I'm yeah, falling. I could definitely see it from the top oh. of the tower. Oh. Was no, I'm okay, I'm okay. There are currently no real underwater effects in Star Citizen, but on the sea floor, a lot of evidence of our crash. Holy sh**. Yeah. Finding the theory like I did. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah, now you know how, how cool it was. It's like pieces of it, yeah, wow. The Pico on the ground. <laughs> and of course, the ship itself. This is the front end of the carrot now. No. We'd recovered what we could from the crash site. There was probably still a ton of loose items just spread over the seafloor, but in these underwater conditions, finding small things like that is near impossible. Back at New Babbage, I'd need to move the boxes into my own local inventory, but it was initially not very smooth. One cannot move them to inventory from the grid, it seems, and even when placed loose, it was a little picky today. What's up, Katie? So also, the boxes... I don't know why, they, they won't... Oh wait, no, this one will now, okay. I guess I just need to be closer to them, like super close. Make sure I'm dragging into like an empty part of your inventory, I would say. It was time to begin prepping the ship all over again. The vehicle has been delivered. Pisces Rescue. Who wants to fly the Pisces Rescue out of the hangar? 
and Vlaz, now a veteran of these life aboard adventures, wanted to speak about the setup time for the ship. The more depressing part is like uh, how much time it is for you guys to set stuff up. This kind of a uh... Like the first time getting everything set up has the, the biggest time cost because you've got to run around buying things and figuring out where things are going to go. But then once you know, once you've got an excess of um, stuff, still uh, right now I've got a bunch of stuff in inventory, you know, um, and you know where things are going, like it, it makes it a lot faster the second time around to, to get everything set up. And here at New Babbage, we really did already have all of the necessary provisions stored in inventory. So it was just a case of heading around the ship and filling the boxes with what we need. Hello. Not long after I get the crew uniform on, only to realise I still needed to head outside for our onboard vehicles. Good to proceed to the mission. I got some armor back on them. And at last, the polar penguin was ready to fly again. Not just any flight either, for the crew were embarking on Operation Overdrive, a system wide battle against the terrorist organization Xenothreat. Our first objective was to go upload some intel from a Xenothreat controlled bunker. We had five of them to hit. And as this is a Xenothreat controlled bunker, we'd be landing behind cover for the first mission and driving in. A very convenient mailing for us to hide behind. Yeah. Yeah, but. So it's a little bit like. Regular viewers will no doubt recognise this mission from our experiences in PTU recently, something that was on my mind as we prepped. We did them all in, in PTU on like the test run. Oh, yeah, you did. Mission, yeah. Um, but it's so it's exciting to be doing it in live, you know, for real oh, now. Yeah. It wouldn't take long for everyone to load in, and Vlaz once again was taking up the onboard turret. Alright, we're all on board. Good. Here we go. Fuck that. So for anyone that is new to the game, or just this event in particular, we must infiltrate the bunker and hack into the server room to upload intel to some outside destination. Xenothreat will be trying to stop us in waves, and the bunkers, in theory at least, get harder as you progress through them. We're here. On arrival though, the Ursa rover had some minor issues. The door is not open on me, I am taking the side door. The back door seems to be decent, I don't know if, if, if um, I think some people are seeing it open when it's closed and, and vice versa. Yeah, which is not helpful. Oh, we didn't bring any hack chips with us, did we? Uh, uh, we'll probably find one down there, I'm sure. Yeah, we'll, need to, we'll need to find it, so... <laughs> yeah. I also have two um, tiger claws on me as well, so we need two extra. Oh, okay, uh, yeah, okay. Good, okay, excellent. Sometimes I've noticed if you don't have any on you, some of the green boxes that you find around will have tiger claws in them. Yes, but yeah. it's very yeah. rare. And as luck would have it, I would find one such green box almost immediately. Okay, but I got a green box here, I'm gonna check it now. Okay. Uh, yeah, I got tiger claws. Nice. It was time to go and face Xenothreat, and we get off to a good start. Okay, Am I shooting Katie? She's shooting flies in the back. She's shooting AI responsiveness is heavily dependent on server performance, and in this first bunker at least, it wasn't the best. Server meshing will hopefully make AI more consistent and active when it arrives. And recently tests have begun on server meshing with players. Right. Okay, I'm in the server room. Oh, don't, uh... Let's see how the mission is running today. Warning. Security 
Okay, we're hacking. Okay, hack is complete. Why is that helmet scared the crap out of me? <laughs> something shooting. Except. Yeah, we're gonna spawn. Yep. Hmm. The bar is moving. That's a good sign. Okay. Xeno threat would continue to attack, but it wouldn't be until the end of the first upload that we get a server overheating. You don't have a Dorito, if they don't have a Dorito, uh, wait. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Yeah, Did I'll find it. Oh, I have it. I have it. Hold on. Okay, I'm ready. Uh, eight one nine one. Let's say again. Eight one nine one. Good, thank you. Excellent. We are back to, and we got the first upload is done, that's good. Well done. I was lower on ammo than I would like today, so I was looking out for a second gun when the second code would come in. I got a reset code on that term, I'm looking at. Okay, so eight, seven, nine, four. Eight, seven, nine, four. Okay, I gotta find the thing. Sorry, I was away from the room. Wasn't expecting it so quickly. What I'll do is I'll read it, right? And then I'll say it again just to make sure they understand. Yeah. But. Sorry, sorry. Got it, okay. Zero, can you watch this room for a second while I go and uh, grab another gun? You need ammo for your arc light? Yeah, I do, yeah. I'm not like super low, but like I want to be, I want to be out ahead of it, you know. Oh, oh, uh, look at that! There's even a marker on the goddamn thing on the first mission. I didn't realise that. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. Six, seven, six, nine. Okay. Good. Katana would drop me some arc light ammo in a box nearby. Thank you very much, Katana. That's great. All right, code is on the second. Oh, there we go. It's done. <laughs> Laz had discovered a code, but the upload had completed and the mission concluded before we could enter it. The first of our five bunkers was complete. It's custodian. But the drive back to the Karak in this harsh environment would not go smoothly, and for zero would result in being ejected from the vehicle entirely. Yeah. I know where to get the white ones, at least. You do the... Uh, I think I fell out. Oh, no. Yeah, I think uh -oh. you fell out, too. Uh oh, dear. How bad is it? Oh, this is rough. I, I'm, I'm, slide, I'm sliding forever and ever. Oh, where am I? I'm looking at... Oh, it's only 340 meters. I'll just get running. Okay, you sure? Because, like, it's a very steep incline. Now that I've stopped the wheels, I'm not sure that we've got enough power to get them moving again. Yeah, we're very slowly sliding. Yeah, we're slowly sliding back. <laughs> we're fine. Oh, okay. We're just on a steep incline, that's all. Yeah, you might want to reverse and go fall out of zero. Ooh, I hope no one's standing up. <laughs> 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 oh, let it happen, guys. <laughs> By now, though, Zero had actually gotten further than the Ursa rover. Going back to the armory, I'm gonna grab some, uh, some ammo. As I ran back to the armory to stock up on Arclight ammo, a familiar problem with the Karak would be reported. No, the rear elevator on the Karak isn't working. Again? No, <laughs> oh, really? Again. Wow. Yeah, we might lose the front again. <laughs> oh, that was boy. quick. Yeah, and the front elevator, while working, was definitely behaving strangely. Just respawn at if you die, so... Oh, sorry. Oh, ooh, this elevator is not looking too good. It moved, but it moves at, like, light speed. That can't be good. Yeah, that's what happened before breaks. That's what I was saying. So, uh, note to self, don't follow Katie in the elevator, start it. <laughs> I was returning to my usual position on the bridge, the top turret remote station. The next bunker we had to hit was on Crusader's Moon, Salon, so we had some travelling to do. 
Now, the kayak is intended to be an exploration vessel, and their provisions on board, like a med bay and lots of cargo space, definitely give it that future potential. Right now, though, in game, the ship is perhaps best of what you could call a mobile base. It has respawn capability and both ground and air vehicle storage, so you can use it as a traveling base. Great for exactly the kind of missions that we were running here, even if it meant spending a lot of time off of the ship. We're currently on the way to HDSF. Barnabas. Their front elevator was deteriorating fast, so I went to take another look at it. Security post dipper is where, where my mission says. Thank you. Mine says access to mainframe and security post dipper, yeah. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> front elevator is broken. Uh... <laughs> it's kind of. Well. It's very slowly turning sideways right now. <laughs> so the only way to get from the habitation deck now was the elevator in the bridge. Where'd you go? Oh, <laughs> there you went. Oh, this is a not reset my essay on this bit. As we travelled, more people would be jumping in to join us on Discord. By the end of the day, in fact, we'd have a very big group helping us clear the missions. For now though, we'd be joined by Sarah, who is to be our very first support pilot from her Hornet Ghost. As we arrived at Crusader, Sarah had already made her way to Salin to scout out the area. Holding perimeter about 20 kilometers out. Nice. Okay. Um... As we made the final descent though, I'd make use of the zoom feature on the remote turret to try and scout out a good landing spot where we'd be free from incoming turret fire. So, so the, the output I'm zoomed in looks like it's a crater. The output's in the middle oh, of a crater, okay. so you should be able to land. I mean, there's, there's some ridges even like our side, near side, that would be that would be big enough to give us cover, it looks like. I was very pleased with how well the zoom functionality of the turret works, and for this kind of observing, it is definitely a huge help. Intel, by the, way, the, the turrets, they have um, zoom, well, remote turrets, I guess, have zoom. So helpful when it comes to, like, you want to check out, like, the terrain around an area, you know. Now, we didn't realise this until a later mission, but Sira was heading down to take out all of the turrets around the bunker, and she did a great job of it. We were still landing at a safe distance on this one, though, as we did not know yet. Once again, we'd be taking the Ursa for a drive to the bunker. And on the way, the topic of the turrets did come up in discussion. I mean, if somebody really wanted those turrets gone, just bring an A2 in here and bomb it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. All the, I mean, even the, um, the A1. We, we did yep. some bombing runs with the A1 in, when that was new, and that, yeah, that'll like take up turrets as well. That was a lot of fun as well, actually. We really enjoyed that. I haven't got to do that yet. The bunker was essentially the same mission as last time, so we knew exactly what we were walking into, but we had a few extra bodies this time around anyway. The mission is really only optimised for a small group and becomes incredibly easy beyond, say, four people. I guess an important thing to know is that completing Operation Overdrive unlocks the ability to upgrade the new Hornet Mark II into the F7A military variant. So just helping people complete their run of missions and having a shared goal within the community is a really fun thing. It's the fun, right? So are all these hostiles? Yes. Go yeah. hostile, oh. yes. Don't worry about this, Billy. <laughs> you don't get crime stats, so are really Ooh. doing anything wrong? Never. Someone's down there. Brooks, I'm out the ball. Storage room, I guess, is clear. Resistance this time was very light, 
and I made my way to the server room quickly. I was going to say we went to server room, but Katie's already here. So. I'm already here, yeah. <laughs> All of the railings are vaultable. I found out, I only learned that like, I don't know, three weeks ago. And so if you're on the upper floor, it's really quick to get down below if you just hop over. Yeah. Oh, Contacts. Friends. Spawn. So, it's uploading him. The mission's going. Vlaz was on the ball and began getting people organized. Alright, so, um, half of you guys upstairs, half of you downstairs. Yeah. I'm done. Yep. Uh, Katie, you want me to watch the server room? Please, yeah, if you want to volunteer, that's great. Uh, okay. Uh, the server's going to open our watch. Soon the code started coming. 4692 for server 317. And for this bunker at least, pretty unresponsive AI reinforcements. You guys say you got it? Anybody? I don't see anything upstairs. Okay, nothing on the stairs. When the mission was done, we had plans to store the character to fix the elevators. But mission three popped extremely quickly. Well, uh, three out of five just showed up. <laughs> I mean, uh, I'm gonna you guys. We, we could take. I, I mean, mean, we could take it. Yeah. There's nowhere we're going. Well, they can just slide back. Yeah. There it is. Of course, the decision to go for mission three mm. meant putting up with our broken elevators a little longer. Hey. Back in the comfort of our mothership. The elevator doesn't work, do you remember the that? Elevator work. No, yeah. everybody to the left. <laughs> when everybody was back on board, we'd be leaving Crusader to travel all the way back to Microtech. Again, another big benefit of the Karak is its fuel tank, which is huge. Even with the TS2 Quantum Drive, you are never really in danger of running out of fuel on long jumps, so you can hop around Stanton very quickly. And no doubt in Pyro, which is even bigger, the Karak would make an excellent choice for a mid-sized crew to make fast work of travelling around. The next bunker was on the surface of Microtech itself, so we were heading down. And on the way in, the enormous canopy of the Karak gave us quite a view of the mountains around us. Now, I instinctively jumped in the air, so as this is just how we've been running things up until now. But Katana would point out something quite important. So, Katie, Katie not to uh, not to burst your bubble uh, or some people, but if you come out just really quickly. Okay. If you, you. Just, if you just come out the hangar door. Um... Sure. Uh, no, we need the Ursa. Well, I right? <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, don't want to burst your bubble. <laughs> hey, I mean, it depends on how lazy you are, right? If you're sufficiently lazy, you drive that. <laughs> Sarah had again taken out all of the turrets, so this time we could park right next to the bunker, saving us a drive. Oh yeah. <laughs> a micro -tech. Again, the group was growing, but this time I was out of crypto keys. I don't have any cryptos left. Who's got crypto? Uh, I got I two. Okay, okay. You, you're on him. Silver in GT. Room top? No, it's not. Go. Oh, shots. Uh, As we pushed into the bunker, there was definitely some incoming fire this time around, and I did hope for more of a fight, but the first elevator I found was not as encouraging. You got some weapons if you want. Yeah. Hey, I mean, you'll, you'll get plenty, but yeah. Yeah, you can get some awesome. options. Go. Go. Uh, yeah, cool. Guard room clear. Sorry, we got it. We'd soon get to work in the server room. I mean, it's moving, so. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, we need one code uh, 317. I got it. I see it. It is. Uh, 9736. And we'd have plenty of time to talk weapons as well. What was that gun? Uh, Demico. Carne. Wait, was that Demico? Wait, no, that was a Carno. Yeah. I'm also using a Demico as well. I'm using the Arclight. 
Oh, yeah. But I've got an FS9 as my backup gun. I, I kind of do I kind of do guns in reverse, where like <laughs> <laughs> So GT your primary is faster than reloading. <laughs> yeah. Dark light, it's just so good now. Oh, I got code. Uh eight four eight zero. Soon another of the missions was complete, and we really were powering through them. But now it really was time to go store the penguin to hopefully fix the elevators, just like in episode one. All right, so we're gonna be flying back to a station right now. Yeah, so, I guess yeah. I guess Trussler. Oh, hi, Chris. Outside, we'd be greeted by Sarah, who was waiting to escort us to our destination, and it was a beautiful day in this part of Microtech. Just like a ghost. In a Life Aboard series, the general rule is to try and minimize the risk to the ship because it has so much of your stuff on board. On this particular ship, we were playing a much looser game than usual, mainly due to the larger and very ad hoc crew. So having support pilots join us to offer extra security is definitely very welcome. We were heading for Port Tressler to store the ship. Being local, this meant only a short hop around the planet. Now, I don't know if it's possible for a broken thing to be more broken, but if so, well, the front elevator on board was definitely getting there over time. Anyway, the elevator's getting worse. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that healthy. <laughs> so it was the ladder down and out of the ship again. Yeah, you, you definitely picked the right uh, manufacturer for this life support because Animal seems to be the name of the game right now. <laughs> oh, yeah, true. The elevator issue was seemingly going to be a regular problem on board, but thankfully fixing it does seem to be as simple as storing the ship. Still, it would be nice if this problem is fixed someday. Next time we'll see the end of stage one of Operation Overdrive and all of the community teamwork that we ended up joined by, as well as a dangerous trip to SPK that ended in quite an unexpected and unusual situation. How will we get on? Join us next time to find out. As always, I want to thank all of you at home for watching and all of our very generous patrons who you can see on screen right now. We're very close to the end of a quiet period for the channel where real life commitments have hindered the time we've got available to make videos. And I just want to thank all of our patrons for sticking with the channel during these past two months. And in this video, I'm especially thanking Sassy Quips, who recently became a backer of the channel. Thank you so much, Sassy, for that support. That is a huge help. We'll be back with more from Star Citizen very soon.